This is part three of the Coke can modeling, rendering, and shading, including um, very simple water bead effect, like a particle system using the hair component. All right, so let's get started. So we just finished the cap. Uh, big difference here is that most of the stuff we do in this channel is using EV, uh, the render engine for um, real time. But um, I'm still not happy with my uh, water beads uh, in EV, so we're going to switch this to cycles. Um, it won't take long to render. It's, uh, we're not rendering super high resolution, so, but you can also preview it. So we're going to switch to uh, cycles. So everything is done through cycles. Okay. Let me see here. Uh, I think I have more CPU power than GPU. All right, we'll leave it like that. Um, the default would be um, 128 viewport 32. So 128 on the render, we might increase that to 200, but again, it's not crucial. All right, so let's take care of the particle system first. So the water bead, all right, so let's create that. So I'm gonna add a mesh UV sphere. Let's move this a little bit on the side. So this will be the water bead for it. Um, actually, let me undo that. I do want to lower the resolution of this object here. So 32, I'm just going to go 16. And then rings, I'm going to go 8. Okay, Because once you move it, uh, you will lose the parameter right there to change it. So we made it to low resolution. I'm going to sh smooth shade it. And we will add a uh, subdivision surface for it, okay, to make it, uh, well, it's going to be small, so I doubt we'll see that jaggedness right there. All right, we also need to make it kind of like a water bead kind of flowing down, so we're going to have to um, edit this one. So I'm going to raise that up, but I do want to, I don't want to use the sculpting uh, tools right now. Uh, we're just going to use proportional edit. So usually when you move one point like that, that's what happens. But when you turn on proportional editing, keyboard shortcut is O. So keep that in mind. Uh, you could hit that by accident and you're wondering why everything is moving. It's most like this thing is turned on by accident. Okay, let me turn that on. Watch what happens when I press G or use this tool right here. All its neighbor will go with it as long as they're in that reticle, okay? So if I press G and scroll my mouse, I'm engaging the uh, area of influence, okay? And I'm pressing G right now. So if I move this up, there you go. So I just kind of made that a little bit like an oblong. All right, and then maybe move that back a bit, reshape it here, flatten it there a bit. All right, and that should be enough, right? Maybe I overdid this one, so let's lower that a little bit, okay? And um, next is that we need to uh, give the same material. So nothing serious here, just uh, instead of the principal BSDF, which is the default, we're just going to use glass, okay? And it's kind of frosted right now, so it looks like there are some particles in that liquid. So that's roughness right here, so we need to lower the roughness so it will be kind of like water like okay i will play with this depending on how uh, it looks once it's attached here uh index of refraction this is that phenomena where you put it behind kind of like an object we're in uh um all right right here you see it it's kind of i think it's uh it's a little too much i think 1.35 might be good, okay. All right, there it is, okay. So it's kind of like refracted lens. Okay, so there's that. Let's go to our preview here. Okay, so let's select the can. And if I hit a uh, tab right here, so you can see there's not nothing in here because we don't need it until we have to use particles, so uh, well, let me show you what happens and you know before and after. So let's uh, select this one and then add. Uh, go to the particle systems tab, 
click the plus sign to add one. Okay, we're going to be using hair. All right. And um, the thing is, uh, we uh, click advance right here so that we can see all the other options. And uh, don't worry about that, but you can already kind of see the problem. We got tons of hair right here, and there's this bald section right here. Okay, we're going to go to uh, render. Uh, we're going to use an object, which is that object right there. So we're just going to use, um, yeah, we can do some rotation so that it kind of randomizes a bit. We're going to select the object. There it is. Okay, so aside from the massive um, size of the uh, water bead, it's it's this one. Okay, because simply it's uh, it's going in there. So uh, let's put some... Uh, uh, we can scale this. You can affect it by scaling this physically. So uh, there you go. Okay. And then we can also um, do some uh, scale randomness so they're all not the same. So we get different kind of size and whatnot. We can even lower it right here. Okay. All right. So that's not so bad right here, but here is not so good. All right. So what we need to do is... Uh, if we go to our object, okay, in edit tab, uh, edit mode, sorry, and then I'm going to do control R. I'm just going to populate this with rings. So not as much as that uh, density, but it should be enough. So once we click that, there you go. So you see how that kind of just got distributed, okay? And we can do, um, we can increase that a bit, and then we can do some uh, seed right here. So this is kind of like a random formation that you can go back to based on seed number so um, right there uh, number it's a thousand so we might need to lower that uh, I don't know uh, 400 all right maybe that's kind of good enough okay it's just uh, something where it's not too kind of plain all right so that's that um, we can move this away you can't delete that it um, it's the object that you're using for this one so you can just uh, get it out of the camera okay so first we need to create the floor and the wall we'll be using um, kind of like the cyclorama a psych right so add mesh plane we're going to make this one massive so i'm going to go to the top okay we're going to move it back a bit since we're going to be having the camera right here all right i'm gonna tap edit make sure that thing is off proportional okay otherwise that'll drive you nuts you can't do anything it everything just kind of follows extrude it along the z-axis there we go we're going to select this edge right here right click it and bevel okay and we're just going to give it some segments we're going to right click it, shade smooth. I'm going to lower this and we're going to probably adjust the size of this one based on our needs. If uh, if the camera can't, uh, you know, can't fully um, frame it. OK, but we'll be doing a different uh, format on this camera. OK, so that's our camera. Let's take a look at the camera. So press zero on the numpad. All right. Uh, nothing too exciting except this is a product shot so we'll be we're using a 50 so you know you don't you don't want to distort this you want it kind of like a, like a portrait shot so I'm gonna go with um, 135 millimeter okay so it minimizes the distortion there's a little, still a little bit there that's probably fine right there okay and uh, we're going to change uh, the orientation of the render to a, a portrait which is vertical so let's go to our output tab right here okay so it says 1920 by 1080 it's it's basically your HD right so I'm just going to reverse the number so instead of 1080 I'm going to I'm 1920 I'm going to put 1080 by 1920 so I just reverse the number then I'm going to go to my view I'm going to make sure the camera is locked to view so I can use my um, middle click scroll and all that to kind of manipulate the shot 
and I think that's our shot right there. Just gonna do a close up of it. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, I'm gonna check the materials real quick. You see how much reflection we get of roughness. Uh, it's probably fine on the label 0.4. Okay, that's fine right there. All right, so let's make this uh, background right here kind of like a plexiglass uh, where it just reflects it. So I'm gonna click new, change this to pure black. All right. It's kind of look cool right there. Uh, and uh, we're going to make this highly reflective. Okay. Well, it won't look like this once we go to cycles, which is this one right here, this reality right here. So we don't have any lights. Okay. So let's add some lights. I'm going to click uh, zero to go back out. Okay. And we're going to go to just simple uh, shaded right here so we can see. All right, and uh, I'm going to add a uh, an area light, which is basically an equivalent to a soft box or a soft shadow light. All right, starts at 10 watts, so it does not have any, have any power, so I can show you right here. All right, there you go. It doesn't affect quite anything except for the top right there. So the size would matter. So we're going to increase the size of that one, kind of like product photography. Okay. I'm going to press R to rotate it and hold down control and make sure that it's uh, pointing to the left, which is your right of the uh, Coke. I'm going to move it back here. Okay. Let's go to the camera. Press zero. Actually, my camera, I want it kind of dead center. Right there. And uh, let me see. Uh, zero, zero on the rotation, 90. All right, so I just want to kind of dead smack center. Let's see what it looks like for zero. Okay, just kind of move it up. Here we go. We're going to select the light area, which is number one light. Um, let's go 500 watts. All right. That's uh, that's not so bad. If we want it kind of moody and dramatic, we can do it one-sided like this. Definitely nothing wrong with that. I'm going to go a 1,000. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to rotate this. Hold down Control. Okay. I'm going to aim it a little bit at the front. Kind of going like so. All right, so we're going to get this kind of gradient right here in line, but we could also do kind of like a double, uh, kind of like a mirror lighting where you're setting it on the side. So I'm going to do Shift D to duplicate that light. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to right click to cancel the movement. I'm going to go over here, which is the other side. Press R to rotate. Hold down Control. Just kind of match that angle. All right, let's take a look. There we go. So that's not so bad. Uh, we could probably put like a over head one right here. Just have to kind of just light it here. Uh, can't really do rim uh, other than that one because it's uh, it's uh, way too uh, far. Okay, and uh, let's take a look. Uh, I'm gonna move it right here so I don't see it in the shot. Okay. Okay, that one's not showing. Okay, let's get another one. Um, I'm going to press 0. Press 1, actually. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. And just kind of rotate it again. Kind of flat like that. Go to the front. Press R, Control. It's going to put like an overhead. All right. And we're going to try and kind of backlight it. Let's see if we're going to see some of that effect right here. If it's going to show on camera. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I see a little bit right there, especially on those lights. We need to power this up since that's our backlight. I'm going to put 2000. All right. And what else here? Um, that's probably it. I don't mind this one right here, which kind of gives it that to uh, 
do light effect on this side. So um, let's take a look at our render. 128. Don't get. Let's do a sample render. Uh, this one might be way too reflective right there. So let me try and kind of tone it down if that's will make any difference. Man, we're getting some some of that spill already on that one. We're kind of blurring this one. So I guess it's fine when it's like that. We can always move those. It's not an issue. So let's go to render to get an image uh, out of this one uh, without doing the uh, uh, parameters right here where we have to uh, designate where it should be saved and whatnot. So I'm just going to do render image. And this is just 1080. Uh, flipped. I mean rotated 1080 by 1920 so it's a portrait orientation set of landscape and this is 128 there's denoise uh, denoising on by default I think sometimes that's something that you don't want uh, because it's just mush up some areas uh, but I mean for this one it's you know we're just kind of mess playing with it messing with it so all right so that's the water beads not looking too bad you can add more by you know changing the emitter number I think this is around 450 okay some headroom right there um, might need to kind of fix that all right All right, it's probably fine right there with reflection here. Of course, you can blur it. Okay, so let's do another one. Um, let's change the emitter. Let's add some more. So it's actually, I'm going to go 450. All right, let's see if that's not too distracting. Do another render. Um, I could also change, let me just cancel this one real quick. Uh, let me make this one super glossy. Okay, just roughness at zero. Let's see if it's, it would look better. Again, this is on cycles. Just take a, take a look at it real quick. Um, it's rendering pretty fast, so no need to edit the video. And, uh, so you can also see, uh, bucket rendering as opposed to scan line render so you're getting those squares and it denoising and all that stuff runs after and it's almost done and of course you can use any label you want um, OCD kicking in there's more space here than that one but uh, you know you get the point you can fix that um, you can do a better job than my framing right here but for now, I think that's that should be all right. Okay, so that completes uh, part three. So to uh, do a summary right here, I'm just going to press zero and um, go to my, so that you could see where the lights are. So there's two right here, just kind of crossing that. And then there's one kind of backlighting it. We could probably move that back a little bit, but the, that's fine right there. Uh, we changed the uh, focal length of the camera to uh, 135. You can go 200. The more, the longer, the uh, the less distortion. Of course, you kind of flattening the top and whatnot, so it's not exaggerated, which is what you want when you want to. Let's say you have a toy, and you want to um, you want to uh, render. I mean, uh, model your toy. You want to take a photo. You want a longer lens. Okay. Kind of like portrait photography. And that should complete it. So thank you guys. This is part three.